friends, welcome back to my channel, Sass here. I'm here for another recap of 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days. First, let me just say this. You all have showed up and showed out. Last week, the week before that, this past Saturday for love during lockup, you all never cease to amaze me and I appreciate all of you all support. I truly, truly do. Just know that I genuinely thank you. I, I really do. To my new subscribers, welcome to the family. Now, secondly, this sweater is from Target, and I think I got it like three years ago. See, it's, it's nice, it's comfortable. And it gives me a little bit of shoulder. Y'all know I love a good shoulder, honey. Let the shoulder lean. Let the shoulder lean. Let's get into this episode. Let's start off with Hamza and Memphis. Now, as Memphis said, Hamza done snuck in her room. Even though Mama Hamza said, it ain't going to be no hanky-panky going on up in my house. You know the rules. We just going to be doing that. Hamza said, be quiet, Ma. <laughs> I got this. See, Hamza supposed to have his butt on the couch. And Memphis knows this. So he done climbed up in bed. But Memphis says, hey. He's here. We haven't had, you know, boom, boom, and ever. What am I supposed to say? No. I mean, I gave in. No, Memphis, you supposed to be in the hotel room. But that's neither here nor there. So the mama done caught her son. And the girlfriend that she just met a couple of minutes ago all up, sprawled up in bed. Can you spell the word awkward, boys and girls? So, of course, it's the next morning. And honey, him's a honey. He thought that he done went for two hours. Hamza is very confident in his skills. He said, very good, baby. Very good, baby. I feel good, baby. He sounds just like Borat. And so Memphis is like, uh, are we in the, the Twilight Zone? Because, see, that only lasted a couple of minutes. Memphis said that Hamza was a two hump. With the dog. I said not the two, huh? Hamza, you mean to tell me that you are too many man? Lord, have mercy. Stop it. Memphis is like, we're going to have to talk about this. Because see, being intimate with my boyfriend and being satisfied, I need that. That's very important. And I can't be doing this two minute stuff. You're going to get up on top of me for two minutes, then you're going to roll over and go to sleep. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever. Especially in your mama's house. Hamza. Very good, baby. Very good, baby. I'm the man, baby. I'm the man. I'm the man, baby. I'm the man. <laughs> so, Memphis, after being embarrassed, she was like, you need to talk to your mama. You need to talk to your mama. Your mama mad, 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 honey, as a rabbit dog. You need to go in there and handle that. Go in there and handle that. Make sure we good. So here's Hamza. Oh, my mama fine. <laughs> Tell me, I'm the man, baby. I'm the man. <laughs> so Hamza goes and talks to his mother. Like his mother is not going to be upset. He knows the rules. You can't be just laying up with a woman. You're not married. So Hamza, after he done seen and heard what that mama said, 
The mama said, you supposed to be on that couch. And you up in her room. These are our traditional ways. You know not to be doing that. Here's Hamza. Well, let me tell you what happened. She, I went in there to talk to her. And uh, we was just talking. And we fell asleep. See, she was on this side. I was on that side. It was no type of hanky-panky going on. When I tell you Mama Hamza was looking at Ham like he had two heads. She said, now I know you lying, literally. You up in my face lying. Hamza was like this. I'm not lying. But just so you know, I'm the man, baby. <laughs> I'm the man. <laughs> Let me stop. So Mama Hamza said, you're lying. You are lying. Let me tell you something. It better not happen again. Your butt. Stay on the couch. I already got my concerns about her. And you out here knocking boots. So Hamza done lied to his mama because he knows that Memphis is worried what the mama's going to say. And Memphis don't want the mama thinking bad of her. And Memphis don't want the mama thinking bad of Hamza. Well, that's, that's all out the door, y'all. So, it's awkward. So, they go out. They go to get some coffee. And that's when Memphis confronts him about being a two-minute dude. And so, Memphis is like, Hamza, okay? You are very quick to the drop. Okay? You're quick. You're fast. Is there a reason why you're quick? Is it because you haven't had sex in a long time? This is Hamza. I'm sissy, baby. I'm sissy, baby. I'm the man, baby. I'm the man. <laughs> Hamza kept saying how sexy he is. Boy, when I tell you, Hamza was like, listen here, woman, I cracked your back. I'm going to need for you to tell all the people. I'm not just a two hump and the dog. <laughs> so Memphis is flabbergasted by this. I cannot believe how, how short of a time it is. Why did he, you know, uh, uh, pull the trigger so quickly? And so then he was like, it's been a while. How many women have you been with? Five women, including you. How many women been in your bedroom? Only you, baby. Only you. They didn't make no leeway. I mean, he thought what he did was the bomb. And Memphis is like, this can't work. I mean, you got what you needed out of it. I got nothing. So it's time to go back to the hat. And here is the mama trying to teach Memphis how to cook some fish. How to gut a fish. Memphis is like, oh, Lord. Mm -mm. See, this fish is gross. It's slippery. Look at the eyes. Look at the eyes. It's looking at me. <laughs> and so, <laughs> Mama Hamza is like, gut that fish. Girl, this is it. Girl, what you talking about? This is what we do. We gut. We clean and we destroy. That's what we do. See, you, you, you ain't going to be my daughter-in-law. You up here screwing my son underneath my roof. The disrespect. And now you can't gut a fish. Come on, let's eat. <laughs> so they go to the table. And Mama Hamza said, look what she did to that fish. This your girlfriend. Look at it. Look what she did to that fish. This is Hamza. Looks good to me. <laughs> Boy, I tell you. So, Mama Hamza is concerned about Memphis's past. Why she got two divorces? What's going on with her? And you're banging underneath my roof. Listen, Mama Hamza, it's over. Okay? It's done happened. She done disrespected you. I get it. But what's done is done, child. And let's just take it like this. It only lasted two minutes. 
So Memphis wanted to be clear. Listen, I ain't been married but two times. I've been married one time. That's it. One time. And it just didn't work out. It's because of, you know, we became friends. We were just friends. That's it. Memphis said, I don't know why this woman judging me. She been divorced. Is that right, Mama Holmes? You been divorced too, girl? Child, I don't went on and on about these two. Let's move on. Oh, let me make it short and sweet. Let's talk about Ella and Johnny. As we know, Johnny is going over to the United States so he can be the Asian cowboy on that ranch over there in Idaho. Now, Johnny has to wait till his visa get approved for Singapore so he can quarantine two weeks over there, then go over to the United States. But <clears throat> let's... Let's pump the brakes real quick. See, Johnny has a whole son. Adorable. I tell you, the kids on these shows are just, oh, so cute. Cute little son. He says that he loves that boy. You can tell. You can tell that boy is loved. So, it's time for him to go over to his mom and daddy's house. And honey, when I tell you they was in that kitchen cooking up some homemade dumplings. Baby, when I tell you, I would have been all up in the, I would have been like, Mama Johnny, what, what is this? What is this ingredient? Okay, so you do the dough like that, so you just roll it up in your, your, in your hand. Okay, you put one scoop. Okay, honey, I would have had my pen and paper like this. Got it. Did you say steam? Got it. How long? Three, five minutes? Got it. <laughs> Y'all know how I love food, honey. My God, today, that's a free course. So Johnny is in the kitchen with his parents. Of course, his parents don't want him over there in the United States. They prefer for him to be with a Chinese woman. But Johnny says it's hard for him to find women. Okay? He has a son, and over in China, they was just popping out babies, okay? So, it was a restriction. You can only have one child per household. And most people was having boys. So, the women is very slim to none. And he has a disadvantage because he has a son. And he's divorced. Now, Johnny let it be known. The reason why I'm divorced is because of my loud mouth, button in, nosy ass mama. <laughs> I said, Mama Johnny, you a meddler. You a meddler. See, Johnny's parents couldn't stand his wife. And his wife said, I ain't putting up with this. See, I'm taking my feet to the street. He got to take his mess. I don't care how good your dumplings are. You can take them dumplings and shut them. Of course, the mom was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> it just didn't work out. Uh-huh. Mama Johnny was up there running her mouth. So then we start talking about how, so then they start talking about taking care of um, the family. He has a good job with good pay, and he takes care of his family. And of course, when he goes over to the United States, what's going to happen? Everybody's culture is different. And um, as we've seen throughout, you know, these shows, 90 Day Fiance, we have seen over and over again that um, the Asian culture, they take care of you know, um, their parents. So I guess that is just something that they do. So anyway, child, we have Ella. Ella says she's tired of it. Okay. She is plus size 
and she's tired of being plus size. She says that it is a hindrance on her life and it is a hindrance on her dating life. She says if she was slim, honey, if she was small, honey, she'd be having men lined up. I said, okay, Ella, ain't no wrong with a little confidence now, child. Ain't no wrong with it. So Ella says that before Johnny comes over that she wants to lose at least 10 pounds. She won't 20, but she's going to settle for 10. Ella goes to the gym, Jeff. She done got her trainer. She's sweating. She's pumping. She's feeling good about herself. Her trainer is giving her the momentum that she needs, and then she gets that fatal test. Child Johnny said that his visa has been denied to go to Singapore. I said, oh no. Ella was devastated. Devastated. Child, not too much went on with Johnny and Ella. Let's move on. Child, let's talk about Lane and Caleb. It's the next morning. Caleb is laying up in bed like he's a Greek god, child. Caleb really think he cute, cute. I said, I think Caleb's cute. But Caleb is laying up in bed like this. Okay, Caleb. So here is Elena climbing on top of this bed. TLC produces. Y'all ought to be ashamed of y'all said. So Elena gets in bed. And so Elena was like, good morning. How are you? So they just talked about the night before. Because y'all remember the night before Caleb done threw her up on that bed. Y'all done flopped her down. Like a sack of onions. So they didn't do the do. They didn't do a little. I don't see nothing wrong. With a little bumping grind. See that's what Elena was saying in her head. Elena was like see I was ready. Okay I did some. Stretches. You see how I got up on this bed? It ain't nothing to it but to do it. Go ahead, put your back into it. See, that's what Elena said. Caleb said, pump your brakes, okay? I ain't never been with a woman like you before. I need to, you know, get myself together. I need to work myself up. Because, see, let me tell you something. Once you get some of this, it's all. Elena said, let me tell you something. Once you get some of this fun size, it's over. I said, okay, Elena. Honey, I love me a good, confident woman, job. So, they both said, it's okay. Let's just give it time. So, as we know, Caleb is into working out. He's Mr. Fitness. So, they go to the gym. He has to carry her up the stairs. She didn't have on no workout wear. She had on some jeans and her special shoes. No shade, but that's what they are. So here is Caleb showing her how to pump iron. And then TLC, again, you all ought to be ashamed of y'all selves. Y'all done filmed this girl, I'm sorry, woman on the treadmill. I'm sick of y'all. I am sick of TLC, your shady ass. That just looked all kinds of wrong. So they done worked out, and it's time to meet her homegirl. Of course, the homegirl is like all of them. They have reservations. So she is asking all kinds of questions. What is your intention with Elena? What are you going to do with Elena? Are y'all going to live together? Are you going to live here in Russia? Are you, or is she going to go to America? What's going on here? Is this just a vacation fling? Or is this something serious? Caleb done had enough of you and Elijah. Caleb said that with his flowery shirt. With his roses, honey, he's sick of y'all. He's 
Listen, first of all, I really don't know what me and the Langer's gonna do. We just get to know each other, yes? We've been communicating online for 13 years, but this is the first time I'm seeing her. Give us time. And if we decide to live together, we'll talk about it. If I live over here, she lives in America, we'll talk about it. But one thing for sure, we're going to have this conversation. You ain't got nothing to do with it. Won't you mind your business? Now, he didn't say that exactly, but I just think that's what he wanted to really say. So the whole girl was like, oh, I know he ain't up in my house. She said, see, that's my homegirl. And I'm just looking out for her, okay? So then Elena and the homegirl start talking in rush. Elena basically said, look, he's right, okay? We're getting to know each other. We're trying to find out where this is going. We'll get there. Don't worry about it, girl. It's all good. So while they're talking in Russian, Caleb is like, yes, well, I'm glad I'm included. So, they in the cab ride home. They're having a talk about what went on with the homegirl. And so he was like, it's all good, okay? She was better than Elijah, but your friends are nosy. <laughs> and so, Elena apologized for talking in Russian, you know, because he felt left out. And he was like, it's all good, and thank you for apologizing. They have a nice little chemistry in that cab. I like that little scene. Well, it's time to go back home. Now, remember earlier, you know, Caleb said he needs to, you know, to, to psych himself up to be intimate with Elena. Elena ready to just, she ready, child. Elena said, don't you let this two-foot frame fool you. So they get upstairs, child, and when I tell you he picked her up and went boom, I said, my God, today. So then she starts unbuttoning his shirt, and you all, I am a 47-year-old woman, and I can take a lot. But seeing Caleb and Elena getting ready to be intimate, I can't do it, y'all. I can't do it. It's like, I can't look at that. I know she's a grown woman. And I know she, if she wants to get dirty, dirty, hey, won't fall to you. But I just can't. No shade. But I can't watch none of this cast because they're... So she's trying to unbutton Caleb's shirt, child. He got his little chest hair showing. He said, let's take off those shoes, honey. But there is her feet. And honey, he done climbed on top of her. And child, she's on top of it. I said. Do I need to watch this for the sisters? Is it my duty? Y'all, I can't. Y'all, I can. Let's move on. Child, let's talk about Mike and Helena. <laughs> Y'all, they did the do. Honey, everybody just out here cracking back, child. Mike and Helena did the do. Mike said, it's the best I have ever had. Helena said, eh. Helena said, it's alright. Oh, Mike. Bless his heart. <laughs> so it's time to go out on the family outing. The mama, the daddy, the sisters, honey, her children. I mean, everybody's go. Mike says, you know, I understand she's close with her family, but I would like to have, you know, some one-on-one -on -one time with her. Honey, Amina said, don't you worry. I have that, you know, in a minute. So they're at this beautiful beautiful location it has a waterfalls and oh it's gorgeous but one thing about it the little water area did y'all see the color of that water it 
look mighty brown to me. Now, Hermina and Mike is just all up in the water, kissing, tonguing, just touching each other, child. Her daddy there. There's other people there walking around. Is that the reason why the water brown? So the sister, she was like, listen here, did you and him get busy? Hermina said, that's your dad. He was like, what's going on with these men? What's going on? <clears throat> so Amina, she breaks it to everybody that she is unable to have children. She got two kids. And she said that she had a hard birth. Okay, she struggled throughout their pregnancies, throughout their birth. She had cesareans, and honey, is it just something that she don't want to go through again? So she can no longer have children. Now, mind you, Mike don't know none of this. In Mike's mind, they're gonna have kids because that's what he wants. He wants a family with Amina. Yes, she has two adorable boys, but it ain't his boys. See, Amina got a past child. Amina something else. So she talks to that translator app. Child, honey, Mike is sitting there with that translator app. Nah, oh, God. So Amina just tells him, listen, I am unable to have children, and this is why. Mike is like, are you serious? Why didn't you tell me this? Why? You know how I feel about kids. And of course she's like, you know, I didn't want to tell you because I didn't want to hurt your feelings and I didn't want you to leave me. And so Mike says, oh my God. Mike is very disappointed. Mike is upset. But he says, you know what? It's 2021. Things can happen. We can still have kids. And so she was like, okay, so what would that entail? Mike, honey, let me tell you something. We see a clip next week when Hamina is telling Mike about how she done lived with a hitman. Now, we already know one of the boy's fathers is locked up in jail and was produced while in jail. Now, listen here, Mike. That is the least of your concern. You need to quit worrying about having kids with Amina. You gonna be up there dodging bullets, child. Mike, this ain't it. Mike, this ain't it, child. Amina ain't it. I'm sorry, y'all. This is not it. I'm still gonna say Amina is gonna break Mike's heart. Mike, a whole hit man. Let's move on. Last is certainly least. We got Gino and Jasmine, honey. <sighs> Jasmine. She wants Gino to build up his wardrobe. Because Gino out here looking a hot mess. A t-shirt that he done got at the dollar store. Some basketball shorts and those Jesus sandals. Now listen, I have said a whole lot about Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs Jasmine, but I'm with her on this. Honey, Gino don't give no type of effort. Why should I be surprised? It took him a whole day and a half to wash. It took him a whole day to shower. It took him a whole day to wash his hands. I don't understand it. So he's just walking around looking like who done it what for in them ugly Jesus sandals, honey. Listen, they look like they smell. And so Jasmine is like, I just can't deal with this. Look at how he looking. Jasmine says, he has on basketball shorts, but don't play any sports. So they go to this little boutique, honey. 
pulling out this shirt, that shirt, these jeans, that jeans. And Gino said, listen, okay, I haven't worked in a while. I've been laid off for seven months. I can't be spending this kind of money. So they go to the cash register, child. And the woman says, $512. Jasmine says, put out your wallet. Gino's like, what? What? $500. U.S. dollars? $500? Or is that $5? Jasmine said, go ahead. Don't embarrass me. Go ahead. Put out your wallet. Gino said, listen, bottom line, I can't pay for this. I am not going to pay $500 for no clothes. Don't you see what I'm wearing? This whole outfit costed a dollar ninety-nine. My Jesus shoes were seventy-five cents. Listen, I, I just can't. And so Jasper says, "How embarrassing! What do you want me to tell her? I'm so embarrassed by you right now. It's taking all my power not to slap the shit out you. Let's just go. Let's just go." <laughs> so Gino is like, "Well, what are you gonna tell her?" So he, she was like, uh, uh, he forgot his wallet. We will be back. <laughs> ah! So they go meet up with her homeboy. She looking all cute. Gino just looked like he rolled out of bed, which he probably did. Because I'm still concerned about his hygiene. So they go out to eat. The homeboy's trying to get to know Gino. Gino's trying to get to know the homeboy. Jasmine's translating the best she can, child. And so then Gino says, let me ask you something. Have you ever seen Jasmine just pop off? Have you ever seen her have, like, anger issues? The homeboy says, sure have. Let me tell you a story. He says that at the salon, his assistant burnt Jasmine's hair. And Jasmine, though, went and tried to snatch this half a bald. <laughs> Jasmine said she broke my hair. She broke these beautiful locks. So I grabbed that B-I-T-C-H and I shake that shiznick out of her. I tried to kill that hair <laughs> Joe, here's Gino. I'm like, sleep with one eye open, Gino. So it's time to go back to the hotel. Because see, now he's thinking about her outburst. Like he hasn't seen them. So it's Christmas. Now he laying around in the same clothing and in the same Jesus sandals. It's time to exchange gifts. And so Jasmine done gave Gino... You know, a shirt about her being cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. It was cute. But what really was cute was the pillow. She gave him a real cute pillow. So she's like, Merry Christmas. Where's my gift? Gino was like, Uh, it's Christmas. You sure it's Christmas? It's the 25th of December. Now, wait a minute. I thought it was the 20th. First, it's Christmas. Where's my gift? I'm ready. I'm ready. Give me my gift. <laughs> you see what I got you? I got you a pillow. Give me. Give me. So then Gino says, um, I've done messed up because, see, I didn't give you a gift. See, remember the toothbrush I gave you when I first came here? See, I should have waited and gave that to you as your Christmas gift, but I'm an idiot. I didn't give you a gift. And so Jasmine's like, oh, you got to be serious. Oh, you got to be kidding me. You didn't give me a gift? Like, what is going on here? A gift? You know who you're dealing with? I will claw your eyes out. You know I'm cuckoo for the cuckoo puffs. Where is my gift? So he was like, I'm sorry. I didn't give you a gift. That toothbrush is your gift. She was like, are you serious? You're cheap. 
You cheap as hell. What is the gift? Honey, Jasmine was mad as hell. I don't blame her. Gino is a hot mess. Because, see, Jasmine says, oh, so you can give all your other exes all kinds of gifts and a trap. And so he was like, listen, that's when I was working, making good money. I've been laid off. I can't be affording all this stuff. Jasmine says, oh, but it's on me. Yo, what about when... What about when Gino was in the kitchen talking about, let me cook you breakfast, girl. See, breakfast is my specialty. Now, Jasmine is a whole vegan. This is a grown man. He don't know what vegan means. Now, I'm not too up on the vegan culture, but I know you don't be giving no vegan no fat back meat or no eggs. So here is Jasmine. Jasmine's like, no, um, um, no, Jesus, just remember, I'm a vegan. And so, ah, here's Gino. Right, you're a vegan. How many eggs you want? <laughs> she says, I'm a vegan, remember? And so it went all over Gino's head. So she had to explain to him what a vegan is. No animal products whatsoever vegan and then there's vegetarian vegan no eggs no animal products he was like oh okay i get it now i get it i get it because a chicken is an animal and eggs come from chicken oh That's it, y'all. That's it. I don't talk long enough. You all know what to do. Don't forget to hit that like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, friends. Bye!